Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at survival analysis and survival models, okay? So in this question, uh, a lecturer at a university gives a course on survival models consisting of eight lectures. Okay, so we start off with 50 students. 50 students are initially registered for the course and all attend the first lecture, okay? But as the course proceeds, the number attending the lectures gradually falls, okay? So some students switch to another course and others intend to sit the survival models examination but simply stop attending because the lectures are so boring. Okay, so we're going to sort of set up two different outcomes here as to why students drop out or don't continue on to the end. Okay, now, so this requires a little bit of a suspension of disbelief here. So just go along with this scenario. So in this university, the students who decide to not to attend the lecture are not permitted to study any subsequent lectures. Okay, so we're sort of falling in with the, the notion of it being a, a a survival analysis, okay, that you can't suddenly turn up at a subsequent lecture. The table below uh, uh, gives the number of students switching courses and stop attending lectures after each of the first seven lectures of the course. Okay, so here we are. We got seven lectures, and the number of, we have the number of students switching courses, and then the number of students ceasing to attend the lectures but remain registered for the module. Okay, so because they're, it, because it's boring. Okay, so we have one dropout in the first lecture. Okay, three after the third lecture, and so on. Okay, now the. This is, this part here requires a little bit of going along with this the the scenario of this question. What is it? Okay. So sorry. Let's just go along with this for a second. So we finish asking the question. So we just properly get a sense of it. The university's teaching quality monitoring service has divided uh, divides an index of lecture boringness. So this is defined as the Kaplan-Meier estimate of the proportion of students remaining registered for the course who attend the final lecture. In calculating the index, now this is important, this bit, students who switch courses are treated as censored as the last at, at, after the last lecture they attended. Okay. So that is a little bit that is a little bit weird. So they just switch out. So they're, they're not considered. Um, they're not. It's not. Because they found the lectures boring, it's because they had a choice and they felt that something else was better for them. Okay. So the first question is calculate the index of lecture boringness, which is the other words the Kaplan Meyer estimate. Whoops, Kaplan Meyer estimate. Okay. And then explain why the censoring in this example is likely to be non-informative. Now, actually, you think about this for a second. It's how these these students here who switch switch out, they're not counted as part of the boringness index. Does that really make sense? Does that is that intuitive? Not really. But we'll come to that shortly. So essentially. We're just going to take the official explanation for these students that they have to switch out for other reasons other than boringness. But in our hearts, we know it's because they found the lecture to be boring. Okay? So, anyway, that, that's what's really happened. So, we know it's not really... It, it, so, we know really that these students are connected with these, really. Okay? That the, the these five students found it boring. Anyway, I digress. So, we just sort of, like work within the framework of the kaplan meyer estimate okay so here's all the information again okay so i'll just sort of start off with this so here's our first seven lectures here's the students who are switching out and these are the students who stop attending okay so what i'm going to do here is just rework that here okay so we have start off with 50 students okay we have one dropping out and five censoring, five switching out. Okay, so the all so essentially we have one student who drops out out of the fifty. That means forty nine out of the fifty uh, the, uh, stay to the end. Okay, so our survival function here is zero point nine eight zero. Okay, 
So at the start of the second lecture, we have 44 students, okay? Now what's going to happen here is that three students will sign out, uh, switch out to another module, so they won't continue after this lecture. But we have zero students who stop attending after this module. So all of the students who don't sign out or don't switch out, they will notionally turn up for the next one. So nobody drops out in this one by, by lack of attendance, but we have three students who will move on to a different module, okay? So in this case, the number, uh, the hazard, the probability, sorry, the event probability here, which I should go into more detail, lambda j is dj divided by nj. So it's the number that drop out uh, divided by the total number at risk, and in this case, it's zero. So one minus lambda j is one minus zero, which is one. So essentially, as far as the construction of this question is, 100% of the students will continue uh, in week uh, in the second lecture, okay? And so what we get here is the updated has a survival function, okay? Now, just to be clear, that is this number here multiplied by this number here. So essentially what we're saying here is that we expect 98% of students to stay with the module into the first uh, pass uh, up to the second uh, lecture okay so mod week three lecture three we have start off with 41 students we get three who drop out okay and two move on to uh, switch out to another module to switch out okay so out of lambda here lambda j for lamb for three is what is the probability of dropping out in this particular lecture it's 3 out of 41, okay? So that means our estimate of a survival is 38 out of 41, okay? And our updated um, survival function here is, again, 38 divided by 41 times 0 0.98. And we get 0 0.908, and so on. So that's what we keep doing. I'll just sort of talk through it very quickly. In the fourth lecture, we start off with 36 students, one drops out due to lack of attendance, zero students register uh, register for different modules, okay? So what happens here is that lambda for four, period four, is one out of 36, one drop out, okay? The survival function is 35 divided by 36, okay? So the updated uh, survival function is 35 divided by 36 times 0 0.98908. Okay, so that's how we get that number there. So essentially, that that's what happens. This number here is at the multiple of is the product of this number here and this one here. That's it just how it works. It keeps working through it. It's just consistently updated uh, based on the previous number, okay? So lecture five, start off with 35 students, two drop out, no registering for different modules. So two out of 35 is the event probability, the probability that a student will drop out. 33 out of 35 is the probability that all the students, or a student will uh, stay in, as to keep attending. And therefore our updated survival function is 0 0.833, okay? And that again is just to hazard or at the at the risk of laboring the point. This number here times this number here, okay? So just they multiply them out to give us that number there. It's actually quite procedural. It's actually very straightforward once you get the hang of it, okay? I realize I'm laboring the point, and I might as well just continue. Lecture six. We start off with thirty-three students. One drops out zero registrations for different classes so the event probability the, the probability of a dropout in lecture six is one out of 33 that means 32 out of 33 will continue on to the end of the lecture okay so we expect an 80 percent of the class to uh, keep going until week six okay and and again, that is the multiple of 0 0.833 times 32 divided by 33. 32 over 33, okay?
okay? So week seven, lecture seven, we start off with 32 students, no dropouts, uh, no re uh, transfers, no registering for other modules. So zero, uh, zero event probability for this particular class, this particular lecture. Uh, that means 100% uh, survival estimate, okay? Sorry, uh, for this particular, uh, not this, this particular class, okay? We expect 100% uh, of the, the class to keep uh, going in this particular lecture. So we end up with 0 0.807, okay? So that's it, really. That is uh, the lecture boringness index is 0 0.807. 0.807 okay that that's that's it really okay now the question is uh the second question is about the non-informed of censoring so it's about these students who switch out these ones here okay so we get a bunch of students switching out in the first three classes and explain whether the censoring in this example is likely to be non-informative you know in your heart it's not okay it they're making excuses they don't like. They find the lecture boring, but they want to sort of be polite about it. So they make up a story that, oh yeah, we're going to register for something else like time series, you know, to get to feel it might be easier or something like that. But they sort of it's it's a lot to do with like they just think the subject matter is terrible, which is, and they're wrong. But you know they're looking for high grades and they think they might be better off somewhere else. You know how people are. I wouldn't blame them to be honest with you. College is tough. So anyway, censoring in this case is unlikely to be non-informative. This is because the students who switch courses are less are probably less interested in the subject matter than those who uh, remain registered. Okay, that makes sense. Therefore, they're more. Therefore, they would have been more likely had they not switched courses to cease attending lectures than those who did not switch. Okay, that makes sense. Essentially, what happens here is. If they didn't have the option of switching out, they probably would have dropped out. You know? So, that's it. We'll leave it there. It's a bit of a weird question, but, you know, we can't be always talking about people dying. Which is what survival analysis is usually about. A bit morbid. Okay, we'll leave it there.